women have a slower gastric emptying rate and a slower gut transit time. Mm -hmm. So our digestion is slower. So yes, we metabolize things slower. And that's why you see like men can have more to drink because it gets through the system a lot faster. Are you open-minded to uh, hormone replacement therapy? And if so, how do you like for people to approach it? I look at it as a tool in the toolbox, right? What I don't like is like how doctors are saying OCP for every young girl. Mm. I don't like the rhetoric that's coming in that's saying that every woman needs to be on MHT. Because I have friends in the States who are cancer survivors and asking me who I know that would prescribe them MHT because the normal doctor is like, no, it's contraindicated. I was like, why do you want to be on it? Like, well, you know, I, I'm afraid for my brain. I was like, well, there's no evidence that it helps with dementia. So we have to be very careful why we want to use it, right? And it is definitely a tool in the toolbox. It's not something um, that stops aging because, again, it's a pharmaceutical. So it doesn't do the same thing in our body as natural production. We're not looking at high levels. We're looking at very low, steady levels. And it's enough to keep our body from having incredible joint pain and soft tissue injury and um, poor sleep and rage and mood disorder and all the things that can interfere with our daily life, right? Do you, is this true that men metabolize things like 25, 30% sort of quicker than women? I've heard that. And I was just wondering if that's something you've heard as well. Yeah, women have a slower gastric emptying rate and a slower gut transit time. So our digestion is slower. So yes, we metabolize things slower. And that's why you see like men can have more to drink because it gets through the system a lot faster. Also has to do with what we call the SIP gene, which is their drug and alcohol metabolism gene. And we see that it's more upregulated in most men than it is in women, which is why we see issues with things like Ambien and some of the other drugs that are pushed out as well as alcohol. So it is, yeah, it's definitely a sex difference that isn't talked about a lot. Protein and exercise. There's some fundamental things that I'm wondering, can we change in our environment that would also really support us in a serious way? Yeah. So Kristen Holmes, who VP with Roop, and she has her whole circuit and everything. She put me on to whole circadian rhythm and light stuff. So I've been digging in a little bit too. And we know that circadian rhythm is also on the cellular basis, right? So mm -hmm. when I'm talking to women and they're looking at, they're not getting light first thing and they're holding it fast and they're going inside into a gym to do training and then they're inside all day, right? So a lot of the modernized lifestyle, but then they can't sleep. And no matter what they take, they can't sleep. And they're like, I don't understand why my sleep is so fleeting. It's like, because the basic fundamental aspect of the timing of your cells is requiring light to wake up and a phase out of light to go to sleep, plus the timing of food. So if we back it up and have you go outside first thing in the morning, just to have a couple of breaths of fresh air and stare at that sunlight, it's waking up every cellular mechanism. Maybe we could just touch upon the little pockets of if you're a young athlete, uh, you know, the wisest approach to slowly integrating building strength. Yeah. So when we look at like the menstrual cycle, um, we see that the low hormone phase, which is day one of bleeding all the way through ovulation, is when we're most stress resilient from an immune system point of view, from a cognitive point of view, from a recovery point of view. And so this is where, you know, if you feel good, this is where you can really push your limits. After ovulation, we have a, a change in our metabolism. We change in our core temperature. We also have a change in our immune system where the body becomes more pro-inflammatory because it doesn't want to have the immune system fight a fertilized egg. So this is where you're like, okay, well, how do I feel? Can I go really hard? Yeah, but I have to actually add in more carbohydrate and protein to hit those intensities. When we're looking at the few days before your period starts, we want people to think about that as kind of a deload. There are some women who feel like super bulletproof a few days before their period starts. Take advantage of those days, right? Because your hormones are already dropping. You just haven't started bleeding yet. 
And the over point of all of this is we're not 100% sure if you ovulate. So this is a thing that's coming up a lot now as we look at the research. There's an invitation you'd want to make for women or for people in this space. Um, what would that be? To try to ignore all the noise mm. and see how your body feels. And remember, don't be Wally, right? Don't be in the movie Wally. Just move. Just move and see how your body feels. <laughs>